Physics, aka Tony here, if you didn't previously know me, and I hope everyone is well. This video is meant to supplement one that I released earlier this month as my ultimate guide for optimizing Destiny 2 for PC, meant to help you dramatically increase your frames per second, your FPS, minimize or eliminate frame micro stuttering, and minimize input latency for a fast, smooth, and responsive game. In this short video, I'll be going over one last optimization I use in conjunction with the intelligent standby list cleaner that I referenced in the original video at around timestamp 17 minutes and 8 seconds, as well as we'll first go over some troubleshooting tips based on your feedback from the original video. As usual, if you enjoy this video and see benefit in the results, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing, and turning on notifications for more Destiny 2 guides and highlights. So the first thing we're going to do is go over some troubleshooting tips based on feedback that I received from you all from the first video. The first tip concerns if you are attempting to start Destiny 2 and getting a dialogue box stating that quote unquote, an error occurred while updating Destiny 2 app running, or if the game simply won't boot, then we're going to actually not run Destiny 2 as an administrator. In order to do that, we're going to need to go back into Steam. Uh, from Steam, we're going to go to the library. From the library, we're going to go to Destiny 2. We're going to right click and go to properties. From properties, we're going to go to local files and click browse. From browse, we're going to locate the Destiny 2 executable application. Uh, from there, we're going to right click and click properties. And from there, we're going to click on compatibility and we're going to uncheck, uncheck the box that says run this program as an administrator. We're going to click apply. We're going to click OK, and that's it. This next troubleshooting tip concerns that if you alt tab and it takes multiple seconds on a black screen to transition between Destiny 2 and your desktop. In order to hopefully resolve this issue, we're going to navigate to the Steam settings. We're going to go to interface and we're going to re-enable the smooth scrolling and we're also going to re-enable the GPU accelerated rendering in web views. Check both of those, click OK, restart Steam, and hopefully that resolves the issue. For this last troubleshooting tip, it was a little bit tougher to diagnose and concerns if you're getting some weird freezing that happens after exiting Destiny 2 where the desktop and or Windows is no longer responsive. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the NVIDIA control panel. We're going to navigate to manage 3D settings. From there, uh, if you remember correctly, in the program settings specifically for Destiny 2, we changed the power management mode to prefer maximum performance. We're just going to go back over to the global settings and we're going to ensure that the power management mode matches that. And you need to make sure that you change it to prefer maximum performance. What I'm thinking was happening maybe was that the graphics card was in maximum performance mode when Destiny 2 was running. And then when you switch back to de the desktop, ended up closing out Destiny 2, it switched back to a normal performance mode. And that was causing some sort of some sort of grinding between the two. So it seems that this has likely resolved my issue with that. The last thing that I'll say is kind of just a note. Uh, based on some advanced optimizations that we made within the BIOS in the last video was that I also uh, have become a proponent of re-enabling the SMT control in the BIOS. I'll leave that one to you all, but that's my preferred, preferred setting for SMT control in the BIOS now. I have re-enabled it. So that's it for the troubleshooting segment. Now, for those using the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner program, Per my original video's instructions, we're going to make an additional change uh, meant to further increase input device responsiveness. Let's just keep in mind that this is what I consider an advanced optimization. So please make these changes, preferably with a firm understanding of Windows and how these changes affect your system. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the intelligent standby list cleaner. From there, we're going to be looking at this area here. The first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to click stop to disable or deactivate the program. Then, as you can see, my settings are already set here, but you'll need to make sure that the enable custom timer resolution is checked. So you want to check that. 
and then you want to make sure that the wanted timer resolution is set to 0 0.50. As you can see, if that is not set to 0 0.50, your current timer resolution will automatically default to about one millisecond or somewhere around that value. So once we end up checking that box and enabling it at 0 0.50, we just need to click start. And then once you click start, the current timer resolution should change to 0 0.50 or something around that value here in the current timer resolution box. So the purpose of making these changes are to ensure that we have the lowest possible timer resolution for Windows and that no synthetic timers are active outside of the timer set within the intelligent standby list cleaner. But before you do this next part, I'd be certain that the high precision event timer is disabled in your device manager in accordance with the previous video around timestamp 15 minutes and 35 seconds. Now, as you can see per our last change, my current timer resolution says 0.5 milliseconds, but most will have some other synthetic timer active running in the background of Windows and say some number slightly above or below 0.5 milliseconds. So we'll need to make two additional changes in the command prompt. First, go to the search bar, type in command. From there, right click on command prompt, run as an administrator, click yes, and type in BCD edit space forward slash enum. As you can see, the value that we are looking for is the use platform tick value. And you see that it is set to yes. Okay. And this is the singular most important value at this point that ensures that my current timer resolution actually ends up being an even 0 0.5 milliseconds. In order to get yours to a an even 0 0.5 millisecond timer resolution, you'll need to type in BCD edit space forward slash set space use platform tick space yes. As usual, all of these commands will be available down in the description. From here, press enter and you'll receive confirmation that the change has been made but you can also use the BCD edit space forward slash enum command like above to verify it if you want. But otherwise, after that, restart your PC to ensure that the changes take place. And afterwards, that your current timer resolution in the intelligent standby list cleaner is now in even 0 0.5 milliseconds. The second change is really for redundancy while we're here. And the use platform tick value we changed above really is the main reason or the main change at this point influencing that even 0.5 millisecond current timer resolution that you see in the intelligent standby list cleaner here. So as I said, for redundancy, we're also going to ensure that the high precision event timer is disabled on the back end because I'm an engineer and I'm a bit of an OCD about redundancy in these things. <laughs> As you can see, when we use the enum command, there's no mention of a value use platform clock. There's no mention of that value here. All we see is this use platform tick set to yes. And that's because I've deleted it to ensure that the high precision event timer is not used. In order to do this, we're going to use the command BCD edit space forward slash delete value space use platform clock. We're going to press enter. That's going to give us a confirmation. We're going to restart your PC in order to ensure the changes take place. And if for any reason you need to re-enable this, you can use the command BCD edit space set use platform clock space true. As usual, these commands will be listed down in the description and that's it. So that's it for now. And thanks for all the great feedback, retweets, YouTube shares, likes, and kind words regarding the hard work I put into these optimization guides. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments. Also, per the usual, check the description below for more info, as well as the first pinned comment for additional troubleshooting info based on your feedback. Again, if you enjoy the video and see benefit in the results, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing, and turning on notifications for more Destiny 2 guides and highlights. 
To further keep up, also be sure to follow me on my socials listed in the description. We'll see you next time.